Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. When you're asked to graph a quadratic function or a quadratic relationship, you could make a table of values where you're plugging in x numbers and finding the corresponding y numbers. That's kind of the most basic way to graph any function. Um, for parabolas, we can use five key points to kind of connect them. We know parabolas or x squared graphs, which are called quadratic functions, always have symmetry. So we're going to use that in five key points in order to graph it. The first point we're going to be finding is the vertex. The way to find the vertex is by doing x equals negative b over 2a, and then the corresponding y value happens when you plug that x value back into the equation. Um, we're going to find next the y-intercept, which is always what you find when x is equal to 0. The third thing we're going to do is reflect that y-intercept across the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is the vertical line that cuts the parabola in half, and the equation comes from x equals negative b over 2a, which you'll recognize from the vertex. That's the x-coordinate of the vertex, because the axis of symmetry always goes right through the vertex. And then the last thing we're going to look for are the x-intercepts. You can find those by factoring, which is what we're going to do in this case. Sometimes you'll need to use the quadratic formula. Sometimes you can complete the square. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. First thing it says, graph y equals negative x squared plus 4x minus 3. Before we do anything else, I notice this leading coefficient number is negative. That tells me this parabola is sad. It's a sad face. It opens upside down. Negative opens upside down. That's how I personally remember it. Okay, I want to um, keep that in mind as I find point one, the vertex. My x value of the vertex comes from being doing negative b over 2a. Uh, again, a here is negative 1, b is 4, and c is negative 3. So I'll be doing negative b over 2a, which is positive 2. And then to find the y value of the vertex, I'm going to be plugging that, neg or plugging that 2 back into my um, equation. This is a huge common mistake right here. A lot of students will write this like that, um, which are in fact the same things, but the key is that you need to do the exponent before you do the multiplying. So I have to do 2 squared and then multiply it by negative 1. That should be negative 4. A lot of students want to write positive 4 right there. Uh, plus 8 minus 3. Okay, so that's uh, 4 minus 3, which is 1. My vertex is 2 comma 1. There it is. And I know the parabola opens down, so I'm kind of starting to visualize it. Okay, my second key point is the y-intercept. That always happens when x is equal to 0, so that would be something like this in my equation. And then if I simplify, I'll just have negative 3 for y. As a point, x comma y, it's 0 comma negative 3. Okay, my third point comes from reflecting that y-intercept point across the axis of symmetry. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that axis of symmetry. It's always a vertical line when you're doing parabolas, and the equation comes from negative b over 2a, which, as you remember, is what we found, or what we did when we found the x value of the vertex. So what I'm going to do is take this point and use it like, like it's reflecting across a mirror. This is my mirror line. So I'm going over two points, okay. I'm going to go over two more. It's a lot easier on graph paper, but on my particular graph, that's going to be 4 comma negative 3. Okay, that's my reflected point. Now the fourth and fifth thing comes from finding the x-intercepts. If you're lucky, this thing could be factored. If it can't be factored, you'd have to use the quadratic, oops, 0 for y. Um, you'd have to use the quadratic formula or maybe complete the square or use some other technique um, that you worked with. This particular one, I'm going to see if it can factor. My leading number is negative x squared, so those guys would have to be negative x and x. And then my last numbers have to multiply to negative 3, so it's going to be 1 and 3. And uh, as you get better with factoring, you'll be able to do this in your head if you can't do that yet. So there's my factored form. To solve for x, I'm going to set each one of those factors equal to 0 to find my x-intercepts. x equals negative 1. Please get in the habit of writing your points as xy coordinate pairs. Your teacher will be much more happy with you. Um, okay, negative 1, 0, and 3, 0. Great, that makes sense with my visualized shape. So I'm going to connect it in a smooth way. Don't use a ruler. It's not like a connecting the dots kind of thing. And there's my parabola. Um, let's pretend like you were doing this and you found that your reflected point was like way up here or something, or maybe your y-intercept was down here and it didn't seem to make sense. 
usually four of your five points will make sense together, and if there's maybe one or two hairballs, that tells you you have an error in the way that you calculated those. So make sure your parabola does have a smooth, like, smooth U shape. It's not going to be one of these things with a dent or something. Clearly, if you have that, that would tell you to check your work on that particular point. Okay, try the five-point method when you're given parabolas to graph. This one is about parabolas that are written in standard form. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it. Work it. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. 